Thank you all for joining us for the uh, January 9th, 2018 meeting of the Hendersonville Board of Mayor and Aldermen. We're going to begin uh, this meeting as we typically do, and that's with a prayer and followed by the pledge. And tonight our prayer is going to be presented by Jimmy Disney. He is the lead pastor at Grace Church. Pastor Disney, could you come up here, please? Please bow your heads and join us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. And Father, just uh, thank you for the privilege and opportunity that you do give us to gather together uh, in a forum like this. And you teach us to bring all of our requests to you. And uh, we pray for the family in Hendersonville uh, that experienced uh, the house fire today. We pray that your uh, blessings would be with them. Pray that you would give them a sense of uh, your presence and a sense of your peace that passes all understanding. Father, I pray that you would give the men and women who govern our city, I pray that you would give them wisdom. And uh, Father, you teach us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, thank you for sending your son. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Again, that's Pastor Jimmy Disney, lead pastor from Grace Church. Thank you very much for joining us today. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Uh, you'll notice uh, the agenda that you have there, but also you also notice that you have new microphones. What you need to do if you want to speak is press that middle button right at the very tip of the microphone closest to your mouth. Um, if your microphone flashes green, that doesn't mean a thing. Uh, it will turn it green if you've pressed that button. There you go. Uh, and, I, and that is the only thing you really have to know. That's the only thing that's different. Everything else is really controlled by here. Um, and we will add to some of the functions as we uh, feel comfortable, uh, uh, as, we, as we feel like we've gotten over the learning curve of the last function. So we have some uh, new things going on here, and we'll, we'll learn as we go. Um, I know we have a, a couple additions to agenda. Alderman Sprouse. Yes, sir. Of course we have motion to accept. So moved. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I was late turning your microphones on. Sorry about that. Um, Alderman Sprouse. Mayor, uh, we have Ordinance 2018-2, 2018-3. Um, we came before General Committee tonight, and we need to fast-track those. If we could add those to the agenda, please. We have a motion and a second. Alderman Skidmore, is that a second from you? Yes. yes Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to add um, all those in favor of making that addition, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please signify by saying no. Uh, that is approved unanimously. We also want to add at the very back for appointments, we just need one for future consideration, and that's going to be a Ward 4 appointment to the Beer Board. And, uh, okay, were those? No, I haven't got them back okay. yet. <laughs> um, uh, you will get those before the end of the night. Uh, we want to add to your agenda for the next two weeks to consider, and then we'll vote on that at our next meeting. We have a motion to add that to the agenda in a second. All those in favor of adding that to the agenda, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. And that passed unanimously. Next, we have uh, presentations. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the agenda with the two ch with the two additions, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, that passes unanimously. We have an agenda. Next on the agenda is uh, presentations, and we have two of them tonight. Uh, the first of them is uh, a, a committee that is uh, a, an, an exceptional citizens committee that is helping us uh, uh, possibly purchase some property and uh, do some great things for the people of Hendersonville. So I know that they have several people that are going to be part of this presentation. I'm turning the microphone on, but please, as you come up and speak, give your name and, uh, uh, and then go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman, I'm Lynn Janneman. I've uh, met most of you before, and I'd uh, like to say tonight we're here to talk about something really positive, as Jamie said. I look at your agenda tonight and other nights I've been here, and you struggle with some tough things. I'm hoping what we're going to talk about is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to help the city without asking for money. So thank you for having us. We've got, a, we've got most of our committee sitting here tonight. Several of us are going to speak. We'll try to make this pretty short. I'm going to show you a video in a second. But what we're here to talk about is green space. So I've lived here for 28 years, raised my boys. K through 12, we used all the green space in town and loved it. And what we want to try to do is see if we can preserve this green space that you see over here on the video. I'm going to start with this video. Uh, so this is what many people call the Beatty Farm and the adjacent uh, hilled area behind the Beatty Farm. This is from a drone, obviously.
There's the little house, that they, the Beatty house there. That's Berry Hill off to the left, that neighborhood if you know that. the old barn. So everyone's seen the bottom part, those 35 acres, the flat land, the agricultural. This is a shot of, in a minute, it'll be the wooded area. It's another 38, I believe, acres of very high hill and wooded area. I'm gonna stop it there. We have about 40 minutes if you want to see the whole thing. I can show the whole thing for you. So, But uh, we, we did this because a lot of us see it from the ground level and can't appreciate that. And what I'd like to say is can you imagine your, grand, your children, your grandchildren, or you out there walking on that land, hiking on the hill, bicycling, whatever we end up doing. And so what we're going to talk about tonight is that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The last time we were in here talking about this, as you may recall, we talked, uh, there was an offer in front of the city uh, to purchase the land. And, of course, you, they, you know, the offer was for $3 million for the, at least the lower part. And as you know better than me, there aren't $3 million sitting around to do that. So that's when the mayor and some of the aldermen asked uh, formed the Citizens Committee. We're all residents of Indian Lake Peninsula. We're all doing this on our own time. Uh, no one's getting paid, but we have some incredible talent here, and we've got probably 1,500 people already on our Facebook page trying to help us. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, here's the agenda. We're just, just a little bit of the, the background, is what I just gave you. The mission, we're going to talk through why we want to do this. Because we have so little time, we had to use technology. We're going to talk through that briefly, and then talk about the community outreach, and then the vision. What do we want to do with this, and how are we going to get there? And then the last one up there is, okay, once you are successful, you buy the land, what then? What do you do with it? And so this is a very quick version. You have in front of you a flyer, and if I'm asking each of you if you would help me. I gave you a couple, two or three of these. If you have a friend or neighbor that you think might be available on the 15th, we're trying to fill First Baptist Church up. We think we're going to have 15 people, some TV cameras. Uh, news folks are, are really excited about this, and we hope you can have a couple people uh, that you know join us. So the opportunity is here. Again, this is uh, 73 acres all told. They're almost contiguous, touching each other just in that one corner. The lower left one is the flat land, what people call the Beatty Farm. And then the other one is that massive hill. One of the, I think it's maybe the second highest uh, point on the peninsula. And it's smack down, if you look in the lower right, smack in the middle of the peninsula. But this is like three and a half minutes from Main Street if you do the speed limit, right? And, and the three schools aren't uh, letting out at the time. Three and a half minutes. So this is a park that we want to put in place for all of Hendersonville. This is not about a park for Indian Lake Peninsula. Three minutes from Main Street. Now, because we had so little time, as you recall, the current owners gave the city till the end of le December last year. Uh, we passed that time. We asked for an extension, but business is a business, and they have to move on. So we're, we don't have a lot of time, but we're, we're trying to put together, and we are putting together the pledges. We have a website. It's also listed on the flyer I gave you. Uh, on that website is a pledge option where you can pledge. We're not collecting money. We're asking for pledges at this point so we can gauge the level of community support. So far, we have probably 200 pledges, all the way from $25, which I think was a school kid, to $35,000, OK? And we've had multiple of probably four dollars $10,000. We're looking for the fifty, dollars the $100,000. We're reaching out to celebrities and business people. 
and we ask for your help in that. Uh, we think we can be successful. We know we can. We've got an email that people are sending in questions to. We have a Facebook page. Within a matter of three weeks, we ended up with 1,400 people. Uh, it's called Friends of Indian Lake Peninsula. I'm doing a lot of the day-to-day -day managing of it, answering questions. And you'll be happy to know they keep asking me questions about deer and paving and stuff like that. And I tell them, well, wait a minute. Let's talk about the Beatty Farm. So uh, that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, you, you can see our drone videos both on the website and, and the Facebook page. You saw just a portion, portion of what we had to offer on that. The community outreach, uh, if anybody's driven in the Indian Lake Peninsula, if you've driven there and haven't seen a little green sign, tell me because we missed a street. Uh, we have some uh, bigger ones, but we've got 150 yard signs. We have yard signs on the Walton Ferry Peninsula. We have people pledging from outside the city limits. We have people from Walton Ferry Peninsula and elsewhere in, in Hendersonville pledging. So we are successful so far in trying to get people to understand this is a citywide thing. Uh, <clears throat> the news media has been great. We've had a great article just came out in one of the local magazines. Uh, the uh, Hendersonville Standard has a great article online. Sumner homepage will have an article this Friday, and I was interviewed today adjacent to the property uh, by Fox News. Unfortunately, you folks won't see it. It comes on at 9 o'clock tonight, so I'm guessing you'll still be here. <laughs> but a lot of folks interested, and it's a great story. And what the, the news reporter kept hitting on was the, about the connection to the land. Why is this land important to the people of Hendersonville? And we'll see how good a job I did answering that. But that was the focus of what she wanted to talk about and have on, on TV tonight. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. He's going to talk about what we're going to do, what the vision uh, is for this property. Mayor and Alderman, thank you very much for your time tonight and giving us this opportunity to come before you. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Cundiff. I'm a resident here. I've been here for over 30 years. And uh, I've had the opportunity to grow up in this wonderful town, go to school here, and play in all of our open spaces. And I've greatly benefited from all of them. Um, just like Lynn said, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create an opportunity for our whole community to come together and improve our quality of life. And the way we want to do that is we want to create this open space for everybody to have access to very, with a very short drive from the main part of town. Uh, it's not tucked all the way down at the end of the peninsula. It's right here for everyone to enjoy. So I thought I'd back up a little bit and um, just review kind of what the, what the current zoning is, what the rights are of the property, and kind of what the vision is of where we're going forward, just to set the, the baseline and, and what we'd like to see happen here. Uh, currently, you know, this property is zoned SR1. It has the opportunity to be developed uh, with 12,500 square foot lots. And uh, what we've done is we went ahead and put together a plan trying to illustrate what this, may, this could potentially be uh, should it end up being a residential development. It, it nets somewhere around 200 homes, plus or minus, depending on you know, exactly what shakes out from that development. We've also illustrated uh, what has been shown on the major thoroughfare plan uh, with the new uh, extension of Indian Lake Road East Drive through this property and the realignment of it. Um, this is what the owner has the right to do. And we, we are not against that. We are just here to provide an alternative solution and a better solution for the whole community. So what we're looking at doing is, as you see these two aerial images of the open space, what we want to do is create a passive community open space. And what that is, a passive open space, or passive park if you want to call it that, emphasizes the protection of the natural environment with a minimal amount of improvements so that we as a community can enjoy it in a leisurely method. Uh, it's been fairly consistent that everybody is looking towards the passive park versus active parks. We have great active parks in the city and the focus has been towards the passive. Passive parks would entail hiking trails, walking trails, uh, you know, nature walking, nature wa uh, viewing, uh, dog walking, uh, potentially mountain bike trails, things of that nature. Uh, flowers, different, different avenues that we can explore. So what are some of the benefits if we were to create this kind of place? I mean, for one, we're going to protect the natural environment. We're going to save this green space. We'll be able to enhance our park system for everybody to enjoy it. 
Um, and there's been many studies, you know, that improve that talk about the different quality of life aspects that we would be benefiting from here. But in addition to that, it is there's been over 150 years worth of studies that indicate that we should see an increase in property values near the park directly benefiting from this open green space and proximity to it. Um, and I'd be happy to get into some of those details if y'all would like to do that. So how are we going to do this? Everybody's asking, what is the property going to be? Well, we want the community to tell us what the property is going to be. First off, we have to secure this property so we even have the opportunity to develop it into what the community wants. So the way we see this vision working out is we would hold a series of community workshops, not one, but many workshops, getting the input from the community and figuring out exactly what everybody wants on this property. We then take that information, develop a plan, present the plan back to the community, and solicit feedback again until we have satisfied and we have a plan that we can move forward. And once we've all come to consensus on what that plan and what the property needs to be, uh, then we are going to go out and we're going to seek grants to fund the construction of this passive park. And I'm going to turn it over to Daniel, who's going to finish up talking about some of the other logistics. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Mr. Mayor, Alderman. My name is Daniel Olivas. Um, I'm, I'm an attorney and a, and a, a resident. And as, as, you've, as you've heard, our, our, our principal plan is to, our main objective is to buy the property. And to do that, we have to have pledges that demonstrate that we can come to the table as negotiating partners. So that's a really big thing. Assuming we do have the pledges, we have a four-step plan to buy the property, to, to make the actual buy. The first thing we want to do, and you can look at it here, obviously we receive the pledges. We're going to form a nonprofit corp corporation under Tennessee law. Then we're going to apply for our 501c3 status. And um, that's a fairly complicated process, but we have um, a donation of time and expertise by Mike Chrysler, a local CPA, who's going to help us put together the 1023 form. And what uh, that can take anywhere from six to nine nine months to get. So in the interim, we developed a, a relationship with the Land Trust of Tennessee. And the Land Trust is willing to accept and hold on our behalf donations until we're able to hold them. And um, it's also agreed to, to give donors acknowledgement letters so that those donors then can demonstrate that they made a, a donation and can get their federal income tax donation. And then, of course, we get the money. We, uh, we actually buy the property. And this was a picture from my daughter and I went door to door at Berry Hill talking to people about this. And you can see that, save the farm, the city and the future. You see that. Well, we, we recognize that, that you are tasked with shaping the future. And we and, and thousands of others like us would like the, the future of, of Hendersonville to be as we've shown you. So respectfully, we're asking your help, and, and this is what we're asking you for. We're asking for you to pledge. That's what we need, and we're asking that from each and every one of you, and for people you know. We're asking you to tell people you know, friends, constituents, family members. And we're asking you to come to the meeting. We have a big meeting on January 15th, next Monday. So please come. As, as Len said in the beginning, it's an extraordinary opportunity. We don't want to miss it. Thank you very much. What time is your meeting Monday and where? It's uh, at the main sanctuary of First Baptist Church at 7 o'clock. And we'll have lots of folks there uh, to help out and ask question, answer questions and so forth. What, just to end on one, main, one more point, we talked about the win for the city, the win for the people. But we're doing this in a way that we think is a win for the owner. We've had lots of questions. People say, well, why don't you let the, the current owners make a profit? And the, the response to that is, we are. You know, he, he offered it for sale, and we want to make that price. And we think we can make a better offer all around the big package to him. And that we actually think that they're pulling for us. We think they would rather sell it to us than to a, to a developer, So I mean, to a builder. So if you get those questions, make sure you explain that to folks. Questions from any of you? I know you must have a lot. Yeah, Go ahead, Alderman Skimmer. Yeah, thank you. Do you, uh, what, have they given you a timetable 
on raising the money or the uh, the only timetable given formally was they gave the city till the end of last year okay, we asked right. for a one month extension we knew we couldn't have this meeting right. in right before the holidays right and this and this was the you know first baptist church is the only place you can fit 1500 people so we had to have it when they could uh, hold us right so that's the only deadline and what we asked for an extension they said we've got to move on which we understand that's business but uh, they said we wish you well and so they're pursuing it we're pursuing it we want to get it to the table before somebody else does okay. so it's all haste basically appreciate that anybody else Lynn, Jeff, Daniel, Ken, wait, all you guys very much appreciate uh, what y'all work. I know Miss McMullen is here also, who's been uh, working with y'all, uh, several folks. Appreciate it very, very much. And Leslie, so thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, one more question? There we go. Oh, I got to turn that off and turn that on. There we go. Uh, go ahead, Alderman Gilly. I don't have a question, I just have a statement. It's okay. been, I just want publicly because I've been there about 95% of the time in their meetings and and I want to thank you all for what you're doing it is unprecedented uh, so many times we see things for negative and here we have a whole lot of people way big number as my granddaddy would say rallying for for something positive and and it's for the whole city and, and I appreciate you. Uh, and, and honestly, I've worked with you so close, I've grown to love each and every one of you. And uh, it breaks my heart to some degree that we're not, as a city, in a financial position to do it outright to begin with. But maybe because of this, we're going to get there. You, you can't tell me one thriving city in our country of our size that has thrived, that has gone over 12 to 13 years without purchasing a piece of green space. And that's what our city has done. It's time for this. This this may be a lesson for everybody: win, lose, or draw. But what what you all have done in this case is, is phenomenal, and I hope everybody appreciates it like I do. Thank you, Alderman Gilly. Thank you, and thank you for your work with this committee as well. So. Next on our agenda is a presentation um, from the Henderson Horizon Steering Committee. And again, please, as you uh, come forward and speak, I think there'll be several several of you. Um, please introduce yourselves. Keith, do you want to start us off, or is it going to be Brenda? Okay. Okay. Am I going to hit something with this? You're, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine with that. Okay. And I'll just click it back here. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Brenda Payne, and I am with the Hendersonville Horizon Steering Committee. The first thing I want to do is congratulate this group of folks here and anybody else who's here on behalf of um, that park space because the thing that we're going to talk about actually has parkland embedded in some of the planning for the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, not this specific piece, but the concept. And so uh, we very much appreciate what, what you all are, are doing. This is an ambitious plan and one that's worth uh, pursuing. So thank you very much. Um, I live in Hendersonville now, officially, for about two and a half years, uh, over on Hunt Club Boulevard, and it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, I, I am tasked with the, uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, introduce what we're doing and to um, give you a little information about the agenda. Uh, we're going to do three or four things tonight. One is I'm going to acknowledge a bunch of people who have been working on this project 
for about 18 months. Uh, and then we're also going to talk a little bit about the background. Keith Free is going to do that. Thank you. I don't know who did that, but I, I couldn't see it before, so it's helpful to, <laughs> with these eyes of mine. Uh, we're also going to talk about the process and how we got from where we started until where we are today. Uh, we're going to talk about the results, uh, highlights of those results. We don't have time enough tonight to really go through all the detail of the 18 months worth of work, but we're going to hit the high points. Uh, and then we're going to uh, close with a request for acceptance of the report and that sort of thing. So it's my real pleasure to give you information up here about the folks who were on the steering committee. And some of those folks are here on the front row uh, tonight, but you can take a look at that list of, of folks and, and see the, the high level of people who were involved in, in this at the steering committee level. And obviously, uh, one of your own, Daryl Woodcock, who's not here tonight, I, I don't know uh, where he was, maybe he just decided he, he couldn't show up, but I hope he's not sick with the flu. Uh, but in any event, he, he, of course, served on this committee and was a liaison with, uh, with BOMA. We also had um, several focus groups, three of those, and, and the committee chairs uh, are here tonight. Some of those committee chairs are William Slater, was with the live working group and you can see the list of names there of the people who were on that committee uh, the work uh, ch uh, working group was chaired by rod kirk and co-chaired by lisa byers and then the play uh, uh, group was chaired by kathy raglan and there's a list of those folks i don't have time tonight to go over all their names i would love to because they're a great great group of people I also want to recognize several uh, groups of folks who helped us with this. The mayor's office has been incredibly supportive uh, for this opportunity. Our planning department, Fred Rogers before he retired, and of course now Keith Free, who has been an incredible help to us all the way through this process. In addition, the fire department, police department, parks department, public works, uh, the Hendersonville Area Chamber of Commerce and, and Kathleen Hawkins, who has been a great help. DECA students and teachers from Hendersonville High, Beach High, and Merrill High, uh, as well as hundreds of residents from um, the, the city who participated in the survey. And so all of those folks are to be commended for the work that they have done uh, to help us reach this point. So at this point, what I'd like to do is ask Keith to come forward, and he's going to give you some information on the background and uh, how the, this process got started. Where are you, Keith? Right oh, fine. sorry. <laughs> thank you, Brenda. Uh, thank you very much. Let me get that back up there. Let me move this keyboard. I think it's pushing it. There we go. There we go. That's good. All right. I'm just going to briefly uh, go over a little bit of uh, uh, what, what brought us to Hendersonville Horizons. Uh, one of the things uh, back in 1993, the city uh, uh, adopted the Vision 2000 program. Uh, that was a visioning program looking uh, uh, 10 to 15 years into the future. Uh, trying to set goals and strategies uh, for uh, uh, for different different things that were of importance to the uh, to the community at that time, and and part of what Hendersonville Horizons is doing, it's standing on the shoulders of the previous uh, vision efforts. Uh, the vision effort that happened in 2007 was Hendersonville Tomorrow, uh, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of good things that came out of that. Uh, a lot of different things have been completed that were uh, kind of visions and goals uh, that were set forth uh, back in that plan in 2007. Uh, this, uh, the task that we had uh, to do, take on Hendersonville Horizons uh, that was completed uh, at the end of last year uh, with the different groups and to, uh, to look at all of those things that have been done up to this point, but take a fresh look uh, and a more intense look at that. Uh, is what the uh, what the Hendersonville Horizons process is. One of the things, just real quickly, uh, actually the original budget for this was about twelve thousand five hundred. Actually, because of some of the, some of the things that uh, probably will be shared, the participation uh, uh, of uh, of with the um, 
with the online stuff, the social media, uh, the, um, uh, all of the professionals that we had involved in the whole process uh, the, that created the survey, helped us uh, create everything. Actually, to this point, we've only actually expended $460. Uh, but it goes to show you that necessarily dollars don't equal vision. Uh, in this pro through this process, as in previous processes, it was taking a very good, close look at our community as it is, as it was, and then as we envision it to be. Just real quickly, there, there was a survey that was completed uh, and by about 1,062 uh, persons, and that's pretty substantial, actually, uh, of uh, the number of people that participated in that survey and it was pr provided a lot of very detailed information and you'll find that in the back of uh, Hendersonville Horizons uh, that data it's very rich with data there was a total of 94 volunteer uh, 49 volunteers including the steering committee and the three working groups uh, that were uh, involved in the involved uh, intimately in this whole process uh, that produced uh, over 4200 hour work work hours uh, of volunteer effort uh, through this they can they can and they also conducted about 27 meetings. Uh, but I just wanted to give you just a brief uh, overview of what, it, what has brought us to this process uh, from a planning and from a vision standpoint. And uh, I'll turn it over to the uh, chair, uh, Dr. Eddie Roberson. And one of the acknowledgments that I did not make because I intended to wait until he got up here is Eddie Roberson. Eddie is my good friend. He came on this committee and I nominated him as chair and I was delighted that he accepted that position. He has led this committee uh, with such organization, with such vision and insight and keeping us on task that uh, we would not have been here without uh, his leadership. And so I just want to um, give, give Eddie all the thanks and praise for that. So thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, it, it has been a rewarding experience, and it's uh, my pleasure to, uh, to, to guide you through some of our recommendations. Uh, first of all, uh, I thought it would be interesting to talk about some of the guiding principles well, first of all, I learned from my father a long time ago a, a, a good story is, is important. And he, t he tells the story of this young couple sitting on the front porch one evening. Uh, they were girlfriend and boyfriend, and he had his arm around her, and the moon was hitting just right. He spoke up and said, honey, will you marry me? And she said immediately, yes. Well, he didn't say anything for a long time. I mean, long time he didn't say anything else. And after about 15 minutes, she said, no, honey, says, you know, you asked me to marry you. And I said, yes, and you haven't said another word. He said, well, I think I've said too much already. <laughs> so the important thing, we want to keep this moving and the flow uh, because uh, to, to allow plenty of time for your questions. So on some of the guiding principles that uh, the, the uh, steering committee wanted to guide this project is we wanted, to, wanted it to be vision projecting. And what that means is uh, that, that the recommendations in this uh, plan, the strategies, cannot be accomplished overnight. It's going to require vision. It's going to require a multi-year guide and a multi-year commitment by you, the policymakers of our city. We also wanted to ensure a diverse opinion input uh, that it was community-based, and, and I think the survey accomplished that. I think the working groups accomplished that. And so it's a broad-based, uh, and there were uh, uh, diverse opinions uh, throughout the process, and we worked through those. Uh, it was important to hear, let everyone have a voice. The next is transparent process, and I think we're required by law that it be transparent so all of our meetings were open to the public. They were announced. So, so it, it, was a, it was an open process. Uh, the next is we wanted it to be comprehensive of all the aspects of life in Hendersonville. We didn't want it just to cover traffic. We didn't want it just to cover uh, economic development, but we wanted it to cover aspects of our work, our, li the, the, our daily lives, our, uh, the, the live aspect, and the play. And I saw, so I think that it was uh, successful in being comprehensive 
and important in, uh, in, in budget that I've learned in my life is that try to make everything under budget. And as Keith mentioned to you, we were way under budget, so uh, we, we didn't use the money that you allocated to us because of volunteer work and because of a lot of help from the schools and students. And then the next thing is consensus building. Uh, we wanted this uh, plan at the end process to be unanimously approved, and it was. It was approved unanimously by the steering committee. It doesn't have everything that the uh, working groups recommended to us. We went through a synthesization process, and uh, we took what we thought was uh, fit well into the vision uh, to recommend to you, so uh, it, was, it did receive unanimous support. The next thing I wanted to talk to you a little because I think it's important for you to understand is the planning process. And here's a little flow diagram that shows all the way from appointing the uh, steering committee members by the mayor and approval by the board of, uh, by the board of aldermen. Uh, and it, it goes through all of the, the plans to the last one that we're at right now is, is the steering committee is submitting recommendations to you uh, and, and the mayor for your consideration. Brenda uh, will talk a little bit about uh, the last point that we'll bring about, and that's kind of what's going, what, what would be good to, to the next step to take. So as we move toward the strategies, we, we came up with three goals, and I'm not going to read those to you. In fact, we're not going to read this whole report to you. We're going to summarize it. Uh, we do think that there are, there are some important things that we do need to mention under each of the strategies and we will uh, try to uh, uh, limit our remarks to those to make sure there is enough time. Uh, the first goal is to make Hendersonville an attractive and conducive place to live. Goal two, make Hendersonville a vibrant and economic attractive place to work. And goal three, make Hendersonville a place where all its citizens have the opportunity to live a healthy, an enjoyable life. Pretty lofty goals that we have. At this time, uh, Brenda is going to come back and she's going to talk about uh, some of the strategies that fit in those. All of those, all of the strategies, as you hear the strat, as you hear us uh, uh, discuss the strategies, uh, some of them could go in more than one category. That's okay if there's a little overbleed or bleed. Uh, through the different categories. That's not important. The important thing is, are the strategies valid for the city? Do you think that they're uh, uh, appropriate to, to uh, try to achieve? So at this time, Brenda will come and uh, discuss some of the strategies. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. So um, the gentleman before us said that he was not going to come and ask you for money. Well, I'm not going to make that promise. Uh, there may be, over the course of the next 10 years, an opportunity for the committee to come and say, there are some really important things that we think the city ought to invest in. Uh, but we believe that the payback to the city will be much more than the investment that, that might come. But we also recognize that there's a lot of collaboration involved in this plan. Uh, a lot of uh, work that really just has to do with different groups coming together and working and making things happen that, that don't actually cost dollars, they cost volunteer time and uh, that sort of thing. So I wanted to first begin by telling you that our survey results were overwhelmingly positive about the city, its services, and our quality of life. Uh, although challenges do, in fact, exist, as with all growing committees, it's recognized that innovative and collaborative solutions also exist through the combined efforts of the city, uh, business, community groups, and citizens. These results reflect a positive attitude about the future of our city, its growth potential, and the ability to develop transitional ideas for an even more prosperous and diverse city. There are no surprises about why people want to come and live here. There are good schools, low taxes, low crime, beauty of the area, uh, the proximity to Nashville. But these groups were not satisfied with the status quo and were looking for ways to make Hendersonville a stellar community for decades to come with its own unique identity. Time's not going to permit us, as Eddie said, to go through a, a whole detailed review. So we've got 15 strategies that we want to touch on briefly. 
uh, that uh, intersect with the three main goals for live, work, and play. As Keith mentioned, there is carryover from the Hendersonville Tomorrow uh, plan, and that recognizes that ideas from a decade ago continue to be relevant and may now be placed in a higher priority. An example of that is senior transportation. The idea of transportation for seniors in Hendersonville was placed in the Hendersonville Tomorrow document. And that sat there for all of this time, and nothing has actually happened with it. And yet we all know people in this community who have little access to transportation and have to depend on friends and maybe family that's around. Well, I'm happy to report to you that this group also felt that senior transportation was important and kept it in there. And there actually is a group that is working toward that end, and you'll be hearing more about that. But it's just an example of the kinds of things that continue to bubble forward because they are important to a community. They continue to be important to Hendersonville. And there are numbers of those kinds of things that we transferred out of the tomorrow report and into this one to make sure that they were carried forward. We obviously saw a crossover of, of uh, topics among those three main categories because we, we don't live in silos and, and those kinds of ideas ripple um, across uh, the fabric and culture of all the aspects of our lives. Sprinkled throughout this report are recommendations to undertake more comprehensive planning processes for acquisition of parkland paving, stormwater and drainage improvements, street lights and sidewalks for areas that are currently underserved. So I'm going to get to what Eddie asked me to do, and that's this. I'm going to talk about uh, eight different uh, topics. They focus on about three different uh, categories of ideas. Economic development is one of them. Transportation and transit options are one of them. And then the planning process is the third one. And we're delighted that there's a win on the very first one I'm going to talk about, and that is to define an economic and community development department at the city level and adequately fund the position and its support functions. Woohoo! We already have that person sitting right over there in Rod Kirk, so we can already check one off, and uh, we're we're good to go with that. Obviously, there's more work to do, but that was one of uh, one of the big ideas. In, uh, in this process that came out of uh, the work committee. Another was to develop, identify, and brand strategies to promote the city. This is a brand new idea for us, and it's an idea that said we want to develop an, uh, the marketing plan that says what makes Hendersonville unique. Why is this a great place to be? This is an idea that bubbled up out of both the live committee and the work committee. So people in two different areas were thinking along the same lines. And so some of the things that, that we talked about doing, and, and I'm not going to go through all of the, the, the tasks there, uh, but to allocate funds to create and develop a cohesive collaborative marketing plan and the collaterals, bringing the stakeholders together uh, to define the mission and engage a marketing firm and conduct that research. Uh, and then to develop that story and implement the plan. We think this is a really exciting idea. We've seen it done actually in other cities across the nation uh, so that all you have to do is look down the road about 18 miles and it's Music City, USA. And so although I know we've got City by the Lake here and we've used that, but I think we can capitalize on that in a much better way than we have in the past. A third idea that has to do with economic and community development is to promote business growth through workforce development. And this came out of the work committee as well. You know, you can't bring new business to a community unless you've got a talented workforce that is available. We've got so many resources here in this community to help us with that. 
obviously the various educational institutions, and I won't name them all, but they, they run the gamut from um, two-year colleges to four-year colleges, and I will name Welch because Charles is sitting right over there, and I want to make sure that I give him that plug. Um, and so we have all kinds of different institutions to help us with this. Uh, what we are looking at doing is finding ways to define the needs for uh, our business owners, uh, to collaborate with those stakeholders and businesses uh, and the workers, and develop opportunities for internships, job shadowing, co-ops, job fairs, those kinds of things. Working with the educational institutions in collaboration develop media strategies and to recruit corporate headquarters, which is the ultimate goal. And so having that workforce available is uh, a very critical factor in that process. I'm going to turn to transit. Uh, there was a, a lot of information in the survey about this as well. Uh, one is local transit determine what mass transit options would benefit our citizens, and that came out of the LIVE uh, committee. And um, there were a couple of, of really uh, important ideas, I think, that came out of that specifically. One was to explore the feasibility of a city transit plan to serve the core business district in Hendersonville. Uh, we'd have to identify funding sources and, and develop ridership estimates and those kinds of things. Um, and then to support initiatives for medical and senior transportation options. And a third piece was to continue promotion of the Northeast Transportation Corridor Project, and that's a carryover from the last plan. The fourth one is to determine the feasibility and support regional mass transit opportunities. This came out of the work committee. Um, and there were a number of ideas there. Uh, one was to support regional transit plans considering the connectivity between Nashville and Gallatin. Uh, we should be evaluating transit options such as rail, BRT, and others, and determine the cost and revenue streams and what partnerships are best for us, public-private partnerships, th those kinds of things. Also, to promote alternative transportation options like Uber and Lyft. Now, I've never called one of those uh, so, uh, services, but I know that the, if I had asked for a show of hands, there'd be uh, several that would go up in this room because it is just something that people are doing. And so we need to look at the future. Um, and a part of that is a recognition that I'm a senior. Uh, the, there are maybe a couple of other seniors in this room along with me. Uh, we're kind of set in our ways about how we transport ourselves. But those folks coming up behind us, my grandchildren are not in the midst of wanting to buy cars. They want to have other more effective and efficient ways to transport themselves. And so this plan is looking for not what's happening just tomorrow, but what we want to look like as a city 10 or 15 years from now. A fourth piece to this was to continue supporting the Sumner County Airport uh, as appropriate, recognizing it as a fundamental resource for our city. Um, another area of economic development, and this, this also has to do with um, uh, just our amenities, because this came out of the live um, committee, but it's out of uh, the Hendersonville tomorrow, and that is to revitalize the Old Town and Main Street Redevelopment Initiative. You know, there's a life cycle to a city. What's new becomes old, and what is old must be reinvigorated through new business or infill development to remain prosperous. And so we think it's really important to come back and look at uh, that town center concept, expand it out to West Main, combine those things, uh, develop committees that include uh, aldermen representatives so that we can figure out from the business owner perspective what they need and how we fit their um, or fill their unique needs in each of those areas. 
We also think that we need to better utilize our lakefront. Has anybody ever heard that? Um, I, th I think there's been a lot of talk about that. Uh, but we're looking at a five-year plan for enhancement of that area, a boardwalk, which I know is already under discussion, uh, recreation, um, and just creating renewed emphasis on that area. And then the last thing that I'll talk about is updating and evaluating the planning and zoning functions. There were a number of things that all have to do with creating uh, new models going forward, updating land use plans, those kinds of things, but keeping on top of the latest and greatest uh, that exists uh, in the community. But this is a critical support for all of the aspects of a city's growth or decline, and we want to make sure that it is a critical aspect for our growth and not decline. So I'm going to turn this over to Eddie because he's got several more that he wants to talk about as well. Thank you. Before I do, I, I do want to acknowledge, thank you, Brenda, for those kind words. That I was set back by that, but thank you. When she nominated me as chair, I turned around and nominated her as vice chair. <laughs> so I kind of got her back a little. Uh, we we do have uh, some members of the of the steering committee with us. Uh, I think Brenda mentioned their names, but uh, uh, Dr. Charles Lee, Char thank you for being here tonight, and also uh, Kathleen Hawkins with the chamber. The chamber was a big support uh, for uh, the steering committee. We met at their offices several times because the city's. Uh, facilities were, were booked or busy. So Kathleen, thank you, and the chamber. We also have a couple of members from the working groups. Greg Wilson is here, and Joe Beaver uh, is also. So there may be other members here of the working groups that I didn't mention, but thank you for your participation. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, move pretty quickly because I, we want to open it up for questions. I'm going to talk about uh, basically two things. I'm going to talk about uh, infrastructure of the city, and I'm going to talk about quality of life uh, in the cities. So these factors affect both the infrastructure and also the quality of life. Uh, first of all, 4.0 in your report talks about ensure access to state-of-the-art uh, water, sewer, and other utilities in Hendersonville. Uh, you know, Hendersonville is, is not unique in its relationship with its utilities. Some of the larger cities have the benefit of, con of, of uh, owning or controlling the utilities. The, the utilities in Hendersonville are not owned by this board, by not owned by the city, but they're regulated by utility districts. Uh, and uh, we, we saw a need um, in expanding sewer services, and I'm sure that you hear those complaints from your constituents. So what we would recommend in this uh, category, uh, this strategy is to coordinate and, and provide advocacy with the utility districts, the utility providers uh, in, uh, in the Hendersonville area. That's Hendersonville Utility District, White House Utility District. You're, you're the advocates for the, the residents of the city and to make sure through monitoring or requesting reports on uh, the, the state of the art uh, or the state of the utilities in the city. That's an important thing that other cities have fallen behind on. If you look at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, some of their water mains are hundreds, over 100 years old. And so the age of the infrastructure and the expansion of infrastructure is very important as the city moves forward. The second is, uh, is a congratulations to this board. We, we t discussed uh, establishing a stormwater utility and funding source, and I understand that you've already acted on that. Uh, that was an important, uh, an important comment point in the survey was, was uh, drainage, was stormwater uh, problems, and uh, I, I commend you for taking uh, aggressive and progressive steps in that regard. The last thing in that, in that category that I'll mention is um, High-speed internet deployment. Uh, our president was just in Nashville uh, yesterday, I believe, and he talked about uh, internet, uh, high-speed internet expansion in the rural areas. Uh, there may be areas of, of Hendersonville, the city limits, that are underserved. And so one of the things that we would recommend is for you to 
contact the competing providers of high-speed internet, AT&T, Comcast, and the other providers that may be out there and uh, ask for deployment strategies and, to, and again, be an advocate for them to, to identify those underserved areas and to work with those providers in making sure they have plans to serve those areas. All citizens of Hendersonville uh, should have access to high-speed uh, internet services. Uh, the next thing under infrastructure is 5.0. And this, uh, this by far was the most discussed and the most commented on in, in the survey. And that's relieve traffic congestion and improve road conditions in the city. Uh, and I know that you hear that daily from your constituents. Um, this, this issue, traffic congestion and improvement of road conditions, was the number one need for the, uh, for the city that the public is willing to support in the survey. Uh, uh, you know, 90, uh, it was over 90% of citizens said they're willing to support the improvement of roads and ways to improve the traffic, the congestion in the city. Another uh, attaboy to the city is an important thing that was mentioned is the synchronization of city lights. And uh, we've read, we've heard that it's on the way and we're waiting with bated breath uh, for that to happen. I know that the government process of low bid and, and competing bids is, because uh, I've been involved in that at the state level, but uh, uh, that was an important thing that the, city, that, that the people in the survey uh, uh, mentioned. So traffic congestion and, and, and improvement of, of uh, roads that have patches and, and uh, the, the, the quality of roads is, is very important. You see, uh, our roads are a byproduct of our growth. And citizens expect safe and good roads. Along with uh, safety, quality of roads is a key to sustain growth within the city. Now we talked about some strategies just briefly. You know, there is a need for an aggressive, proactive, and long-term strategy to improving the city roads. I think that, the, that you have acted on that and that there is a plan. And I think the citizens will, will be very pleased once they see the uh, asphalt trucks out laying asphalt uh, in, the, in the communities. Uh, I, as I said, a paving plan was the greatest need mentioned in the survey. Uh, one of the things that uh, was brought up about traffic congestion is uh, ex consider expanding the use of left turn at certain intersects under a flashing yellow light. Uh, now I know that we have that provision on some of the roads beginning at like 2 o'clock in the morning, but my, my, uh, several of the people uh, on the committee said why can't we expand that? I was in Atlanta just uh, a couple of months ago uh, in some of the suburbs of Atlanta, and they are allowing that. Uh, so even on congested ways, there's a blinking yellow light that you can turn left on. So that was another thing that might help congestion. Uh, the ex inter, the inter exchange at Forest Retreat uh, was mentioned uh, in the survey and also in the committees and was recommended. Um, and we listed in the report there are several roads that, that the committee uh, went, I guess, into the weeds, went into a little, a lot of detail that there were certain roads that the steering committee and also the committee said these need the attention and I would hope that the staff would see those and, and work with you on uh, improving those roads uh, that were mentioned. Um, then the next thing is the, the quality of life for years to come. Uh, quality of life factors are important in attracting families to our city in the, for the future. Such factors uh, as measured in the survey include a low crime rate, quality school churches, the abundance of churches, recreational opportunities, and a sense of the community. And Hendersonville has these qualities and must be proactive in maintaining these factors. So the first thing is 12.0. And this is something that's gotten a lot of attention lately, and I applaud the mayor and the police chief for aggressively uh, dealing with this, is maintain a commitment to public safety, both fire and police protection. Um, you know, as we grow, Hendersonville will not be spared from uh, some activities that other cities 
that are growing uh, have experienced. And according to the survey on page 19, uh, the factor that's most important in people choosing to live in Hendersonville is a low crime rate. And again, uh, you and the police chief uh, and the police department are to be commended for their work in that. Some of the strategies are, are listed, uh, expand the use of street lights and cameras in certain areas to, to promote public safety, uh, continue to evaluate police and fire response times in the city, um, and establish a goal of improving the city's fire protection rating. I know the police chief has discussed that with many of you, and hopefully we can improve that. That benefits all citizens in the city. Uh, and last, to ensure our first responders have the technology and training needed to protect its citizens. Uh, next is 14.0, uh, and we're just about finished, as my dad says a lot as he's ending the sermon, uh, is to promote a healthy living environment for citizens. And uh, the, the steering committee was, was very uh, encouraged by the recycling program that the city has started and would encourage the BOMA to uh, expand that. Also, to seek a healthy living designation. This is something that's very important to, uh, to younger, uh, the, the younger uh, people in our city, the millennials and those younger. And so uh, anything that the city or the mayor can do to promote healthy living within the city is, I think, is commendable. Uh, the mayor of Nashville did that several years ago and got a distinction, healthy living. So that, I think, is a worthy goal. And uh, expand greenways and bike trails, uh, support future recreational needs for all its citizens, such as Mary's Magical Place for special needs citizens. Uh, we talked about the establishment of many recreational facilities for children in emerging population growths. Uh, and then to work uh, closer with the Sumner County Visitors Bureau to better market the lakes, parks, historical sites, and music of, of Hendersonville. 13.0 is something that I know uh, Greg is in favor of, and that is to support and expand and update the arts and recreational facilities of the city. So we would recommend that in consultation with the Hendersonville Arts Council is to support the establishment or the, at least the plans of an arts center. That would be like a multi-use uh, facility that uh, plays could be, concerts, and uh, cultural activities that are important for the growth of the city uh, as we move forward. So the, the steering committee was very bullish on uh, that aspect of, of long-range planning for the city. Upgrade existing recreational facilities. Uh, in the working groups, several of the uh, members talked about the, the needs of the existing facilities that we have. And, uh, and, and so uh, there, there is, I believe, a need to, uh, to look at those recreational facilities. One of the things at the recreational facilities, especially athletic fields, is there was a need to conduct a traffic study to improve parking and also ease of access. Uh, some of our recreational facilities only have one uh, in and out, and that makes it very difficult. And so it was suggested a traffic study to look at how you could improve the traffic flow in those facilities. Uh, support non-traditional team sports, uh, such as rugby and lacrosse, and uh, sporting events that I know nothing about. Uh, they, they didn't have those things when I played, but, but that is something that as millennials and younger people, and especially people moving in, want those kinds of activities for their children. Uh, and then as Brenda said, establish a long range capital improvement plan for parks and recreational facilities. The last thing, uh, and I'll just mention it briefly, is make Hendersonville a more beautiful place. We suggest uh, improving the uh, entrance Rent entrances to the city by enhancing them, uh, revitalize the city's beautiful Henderson, Hendersonville committee. And in the report, we list several suggestions of how that can be done. Um, and uh, last uh, but not least, uh, uh, enforce uh, property maintenance and code enforcement efforts. So with that, 
that is uh, that that's a conclusion of our strategies and I know Brenda has some closing remarks but I think it might be good to open it up right now and I'll, I'll ask Dr. Lee and Kathleen to also help us uh, answer any questions so do you have any questions about the strategies that we've talked about any questions and I know you just got the report and I know you'll need to study it but uh, we're here to uh, try to answer any questions that you may have Dr. Roberson I think you're going to hit on four specific next steps is it time to do that is that Brenda that's Brenda okay that's Brenda okay so if there's no questions we'll move right on okay Well, we, we trust that the Hendersonville Horizons report is going to be a living document for our elected officials and our business leaders and our community organizations, nonprofits, and residents to identify priorities and develop innovative ideas to execute the goals and strategies. What we're here to do tonight is to request your standard process for acceptance of the report by BOMA and authorization of a Hendersonville Horizons Implementation Committee uh, of those currently on the steering committee at your pleasure until such time as their terms expire. Um, and that committee then would establish uh, the mission and purpose of that implementation committee and also make recommendations about the frequency of those meetings. I will tell you that there's been a, a good deal of discussion about how often that group might ought to meet. The Hendersonville Tomorrow Committee met on an annual basis uh, until they didn't. And then, <laughs> um, and so, um, uh, so we believe that it's important to keep this top of mind. Uh, if, if the committee itself is not looking at it on a regular basis, they're not going to keep that out in front of uh, BOMA. And so we're, we're recommending that that frequency be no less than twice a year for them to report back uh, to this body on the um, strategies and the priorities and the status uh, of those priorities and the timelines moving forward. So again, our request is for your standard process. Thank you for that. Uh, part of that, what I've asked them to do is to go to each committee, each of our standing committees, and discuss the parts of their final report that pertain to those committees, uh, and then come back here and ask us to accept their, their final report. Okay. Uh, okay. Hold on here. Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for all your hard work. I'm really impressed. Um, are you proposing to come up with some type of uh, budget needs for the upcoming, for our upcoming budget to be considered as part of your Oops. proposal? Um, I think the committee will take a look at what pieces and parts of this overall plan they'd like to tackle and recommend uh, with the assistance of the alderman who is assigned to the committee uh, so so that uh, if there are in fact some budget implications you would know well in advance uh, the committee is certainly not going to be about the business of trying to tackle something in the middle of a budget year uh, that that might create some issues there so uh, there would be a lot of notice to to this board if there were budget implications does that answer your question the reason I'm asking is because we consider um, we have to have the recommendations for to be included in the budget for the new fiscal year for July 1st mm -hmm. uh, have to have them in by March is that right uh, we've got some flexibility March would certainly be helpful okay March yeah. April time frame okay thank that's you. good to know Arlene thank, thank you, you very much okay. As, as, as far as the budget, let me just amplify a little bit. Uh, you know, w we don't have access uh, to that kind of data. Uh, the, the, the staff, I believe, would have to come up. So po one possible r way that you could proceed is each of the committees with the, the, the different strategies that fall under their committees could say, we want to we ask the staff to develop a budget to implement that. And uh, we'd, we'd be glad to, to, to give some input 
but I think the, the budgeting process, uh, you know, would, would come from the staff after the committee and the BOMA would approve whatever strategy they felt was important, I Thank believe. You. It's a good idea. Thank you. Any questions from up here? Any other comments from there? Did you want to? This is Kathleen Hawkins, one of the members of the steering committee. Good. Thank you. Alderman Cunningham, and I hope it's okay that I say this. Um, Dr. Lee and I were just talking. This is our guidance to you. Like, we're hoping that you use this consistently on a monthly basis as each one of the committees are looking at what their goals are through the course of the year. So as a steering committee, we want to be here to continue to advocate and support what you're doing, but we don't necessarily want to take all of these things and say, we're going to tackle it all for you and create the budget for you. So um, as we move forward, we just want to continue you providing you with that guidance and assistance and being the voice of the citizens okay Kathleen, Thanks. thank you any other questions or comments from the board we appreciate y'all very much um, y'all have certainly put in a lot of work on this there's no doubt about it and what's even more amazing is you've asked to continue working on this <laughs> we very much appreciate that just so, twice a year though. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay uh alderman brown i can't hold on here Listening to what go. Brenda said that they wanted and what you said that we want them to do, uh, you need to go back and reiterate for me exactly where we're at again. You all are going to go to each individual committee. What did you say? They're going to go to each individual committee, uh, cut up the their final report into four portions. Each committee okay. they'll, re they'll report to that committee based on what pertains uh, from their final report. So then they come back to the full board uh, and ask that we adopt their whole report. So instead of them bringing everything to all of us, we'll split it up and go to the individual committees. I think it would be understood better if we did that. Okay. Hopefully so. Yeah. Hopefully so. Appreciate that, Alderman Brown. Thank you all. Appreciate you all very much. Next on the agenda, we have uh, public hearings. First item is to hear comments on a request by James Wallace and Jared Crane to rezone one, uh, excuse me, uh, parcel 14648. This is located on the south side of Avondale Road, East Laverne Circle, from suburban residential low density, which is SR1, to heavy commercial. We have nobody signed up for that public hearing, so this public hearing is closed. The next public hearing is to hear comments on a request by Dharmesh Pat Patel to rezone 159E, Group B, parcels 25 and a portion of 29, located on the east side of Carrington Road, south of East Main Street, from general commercial to multifamily residential. We have one person signed up to speak on that. We will not close the public hearing on this tonight. Uh, the uh, applicant asked that we uh, delay consideration of, of the application. Um, so if anybody would like to speak, and we do have Dan Ford who has signed up to speak, uh, and Dan, you're quite welcome to, uh, or you could put that off to when this comes in front of the board, or you could do both. So, Mr. Ford. Okay. Okay. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, and again, we will, uh, we will take this, we will continue this public hearing another date uh, when the applicant uh, comes back. Uh, next we have minutes. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve our December 12, 2017 meeting minutes. We have a motion and a second. And you know, by the way, I can only turn on one microphone at a time, so speak loudly or, or, or wait. And so. A uh, motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting the minutes of uh, December 12, 2017, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Next, we have citizens' comments. We have nobody wishing to speak in citizens' comments. That is followed by our committee reports. Uh, Chairman Cunningham uh, with our finance committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have no report. Uh, our next meeting is on Tuesday, January the 23rd at 630. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Chairman Sprouse, General Committee. Thank you, Mayor. General Committee met tonight, had a pretty full agenda. Go through here really quickly. We have two ordinances we consider tonight that uh, we've also added on the agenda for tonight. Ordinance 2018-2, 2018-3, having to deal with small cell facilities. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Those were both uh, recommended for approval unanimously. Uh, resolution 2018-1 will be coming to this board at a later date, dealing with personnel rules and regulations considering uh, funeral leave, uh, change 
changed the policy, and we'll be discussing that in a few weeks, again, recommended unanimously. And then we had uh, two issues having to deal with uh, final development plans, 2018-2, dealing with, uh, deal with the final development plan for Indian Lake Village. That was recommended unanimously, as was 2018-3, having to deal with final development plan amendment for the Drakes Creek Shopping Center. Um, and that will be all of those will be coming to the board at a later date, and we're recommending unanimous, unanimously by the committee. Thank you, Chairman Sprouse. Thank you, Chairman Brow, Public Safety Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is red on? Or yes. No? Okay, red's on. Uh, our meeting uh, began with an update on our ISO rating as discussed in previous 2012 2017. You two will be very interested in our ISO rating because it's going to lower insurance premiums for our businesses and our homeowners in our city. And uh, Chief will be uh, making that presentation uh, at our next meeting of how that will be facilitated and whatever. Uh, could could mean quite a bit of dollars, could mean a little bit of dollars, but it, it's uh, another positive thing tonight moving forward for the city. Um, uh, we talked about overtime, uh, which uh, we talk about that somewhat every meeting, and uh, those things we have to do to keep the city going, and sometimes we have illnesses and uh, youngins being born and vacations, and uh, so we do have some overtime. Uh, consideration of a lawsuit related to opioid use. I think most of you have seen on the news about the big pharmacy lawsuits that have been filed by some of the cities and governments around. Uh, the mayor asked us to consider doing that and entering a lawsuit and giving him permission to move forward with that. What I will tell you that it is, uh, we did do that. We voted to move forward as our police department has spent several hours over and above normally uh, what would be the norm. Uh, in investigation of uh, opioid use within our cities and areas. Uh, what that means is, uh, uh, Mr. Bradley, I'm assuming, and the mayor will, will contact uh, those attorneys that are, are dealing in that. We will enter a lawsuit. And the uh, uh, big thing that you're probably thinking is how much money is it going to cost us? It will not cost the city anything. More than likely not. If it is, the mayor will bring that back Absolutely. to us. We also had a resolution 2018-05, a resolution to replace wrecked vehicles in our department. Uh, that money is uh, already in the department through, in our police department through uh, insurance premiums and or uh, transfer of some other line items. So that's not cost us anything. The last thing on our agenda was added. Our dear monitoring committee uh, had proposed and voted to continue uh, the dear non-feeding ordinance that uh, we've had for 18 months. Uh, we should have handled that piece of business in December. We did not do that, so we discussed that tonight. That ordinance will be back before this board to be voted on as a permanent ordinance or non-permanent ordinance in our next meeting. So that's it. Thank you. Chairman Brown, thank you. Chairman Skidmore, Public Works. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just briefly, we are scheduled to meet on January 23rd at 530. Uh, here in the conference room for our first uh, public works uh, of 2018 and also tonight on your agenda 2017-42 ordinance was passed unanimously to recommend to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Thank you. Chairman Skidmore, thank you. Chairman Campbell, Capital Projects. No report at this time, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Campbell. Um, uh, Alderman Petrelli, Planning Commission. The Planning Commission met on Tuesday, January 2nd. Uh, preliminary development plans, the Drake's Creek Shopping Center, uh, which is the old Kroger store. Um, it was recommended approval to BOMA for a um, use of storage. Indian Lake Village Phase 1 um, increased the height of the tower. Um, that was recommended approval to BOMA. Bank of Tennessee site plan was approved and Durham Farms Townhouses site plan, that was also approved. We also had um, the annual election of officers. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, the chairman is David Jenkins. The vice chairman is um, Key McCormick. And then secretary is Lori Ashley with alternate secre secretary, Dr. Charles Lee. Thank you. Alderman Petrelli, thank you. Um, Alderman Woodcock, Henderson Horizons Committee. We're going to skip that. I feel like we've had a, 
a very adequate uh, Henderson Horizons report. Uh, the mayor's report. A couple of things I want to tell you, uh, most specifically about the Planning Commission. We had one resignation recently. Uh, we've had a, uh, a reappointment, so we're going and we're also going to have two new faces on there. Uh, I look forward to that. Um, we also, in relation to the Planning Commission, we are working on uh, changing a part-time position in our planning department to a full-time position, and it will not impact our overall salaries because in some of the hirings we've had, those positions are actually paid less than what the previous person had been in that position. So we've had some savings there, and it makes sense, especially considering how much we have going on in our planning department, to, uh, to move a person from, from part-time to full-time. Uh, also, um, our planning department and working with planning commission is, uh, uh, has, taken three, has taken proposals from three companies to study impact fees, and we hope to study those and, and, have, uh, and, and choose one within the uh, next week or so. And finally, um, this is sort of a big deal, our staff is working with planning commission to update our zoning code. So if there's things that you hear from some of your constituents or things that you see out there, you think we need to change that, uh, now's the time to talk to our staff, and uh, that will go to Planning Commission uh, sometime in the future. And there's a lot of little things that we need to change, and some of those are that we have some uses in some places that just didn't used to exist. We didn't used to have indoor trampoline parks, and now we're sort of having to adjust for those. And there's a lot of other things that we're sort of having to adjust with in our Planning Commission is uh, looking forward to, excuse me, our planning staff is looking forward to making some of those changes and, uh, and getting, to the, um, uh, getting to the Planning Commission and then to us. And um, one more thing, uh, continuing the, the Mayor's report, uh, Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to make a short, uh, brief announcement. Uh, we're planning a, uh, a Ward 3 community meeting on, uh, Jan on Thursday, January 25th at 6.30 at Good Shepherd Methodist Church on New Shack Island Road. So mark your calendars. Thank you. Alderman Cunningham, thank you for that. Um, appreciate you making that announcement since I'm tentative on being there, but I hope to, hope to be able to do that. Okay. Um, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Quick yeah. question. Um, pay study, when, when will that start and finish? Or is I'm looking at Peter. Uh, do you know? We have to have that done before budget. Time, yeah. Right? And this, Let's go. Um, Arlene, do you want? Okay, that's probably best. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're going to have a full uh, report on that at the next finance meeting, which is two weeks from today. Okay. The, the um, short answer is from I our don't finance know yet. department. Short answer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Alderman Stamper. Two things, Mayor. Does that, does that change in the uh, from part time to full time mm -hmm. need to go through committee? It, it doesn't. Okay. Does it? Uh, and also, Ward 6, we're having our meeting a week from Friday. January the 19th? January the 19th. January the 19th? At the VFW Hall, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Behind the liquor store. Don't say that. Well, <laughs> so they'll know how to get there. Oh. And uh, it's going to be a similar type of meeting to uh, the other wards uh, mm -hmm. about the, you know, have the police department there. And there's a back door that looks Okay. We, we, we appreciate that. Thank you. Next, we have second reading of, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like two more now. Uh, Alderman Brown. Mr. Gilley has an announcement. Okay. Is this still part of my report? Yes. Okay. Yes. Help, me, help me with my report. Uh, ward, ward 4 public safety meeting, community safety meeting. What are, what are we calling these? A meeting. A meeting of Ward 4. <laughs> community meeting. Uh, ward 4, Monday night, the 29th of January at the Maples Clubhouse, uh, 6 o'clock. No liquor store near the Maples Clubhouse. Alderman Gilly, thank you. Next we have second reading of Ordinance 2017-39. This is an ordinance rezoning the property located on the south side of Avondale Road, east of Laverne Circle. Alderman Petrelli. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor of second reading uh, of Ordinance 2017-39, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have second reading of Ordinance 2017-43. This is an ordinance accepting a grant um, and amending our budget ordinance of 2017-23 by appropriating $6,828.34 for bulletproof vests for the police department. Alderman Brown. So moved. A motion and a second. 
Second. All those in favor of accepting second reading of Ordinance 2017-43, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have second reading of Ordinance 2017-44. This is an ordinance amending a budget ordinance, which is 2017-23, by appropriating $131,525 for stormwater drainage expenditures in the general fund. Alderman Campbell? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Second. Alderman Hedberg. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, just want, I just want to make sure what... Uh, have someone explain to me what the process of transferring, borrowing these funds essentially, how is it going to go back to the paving? That's my only concern, to be sure that it actually gets put back where it's been pulled from. Uh, who's the... Uh, Alderman Campbell, you want to go with that one? Well, I would... Um, yes, sir, I would... It's so my understanding that it would be taken out of the uh, the money that is collected from the utility itself back into the um, pavement fund uh, as soon as those funds become available. That's how it's uh, set up to get to do it. I mean, we have some money that's not being utilized at the moment due to the weather and the temperature. It is. Paving, it's just waiting. Two point eight million. Yes, ma'am. Do it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> And uh, that's exactly so that's what it's going to do. Do you think that, and that's going to be before the end of this um, budget year? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. Alderman Hedberg, you still have the floor. Anything else? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, anything else, Alderman Hedberg? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderman Waters. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is confusing. I'd like to ask the Public Works Director to come to the podium and explain exactly this transaction because. She brings up a good point, and I want to be sure we all understand the, the mechanism, how it's going to work. Go Alderman Waters, thank you, Chip. Uh, hold on here. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. It's uh, the way that, um, to my understanding, that this will work. As Alderman Campbell said, we would take the money that we do receive from next year's um, receivables for the stormwater utility, put that in the paving for next fiscal year. So it is trading out $131,000 this year for one hundred and or whatever the amount is for that paving to be added into next year. Alderman Waters? That's good. That's good. Okay. Just want to be sure we all understood how this is going to be transacted. I appreciate that. Alderman Skidmore? Yes, thank you, Mayor. And if ever, and I tell you what, it's a very good question mm -hmm. and one we've answered. If you look on the very next page, on 20, uh, page 22, it's a declaration of an official intent that tells that that is accompanying the ordinance 2017-44 um, where the money's coming from and how the money is supposed to be transferred, it's on the very next page. That's just how we roll in public works. <laughs> so we're good to go. Thank you, uh, Alderman Skidmore. Alderman Stamper. Thank you, Mayor, and I, I support the what we're doing here, but and I don't expect this board to change its mind in such a short amount of time, but I you know, one one board can't obligate another as far as this is just our letter of intent. So if for some reason during budget time, seven of us changed our minds, and I guess I'm kind of asking the John or, or Pat, whoever, or Alderman Campbell, excuse me. Um, we could, in theory, not pay this money back. Is that is that correct? I'm not saying that we, that's not my intent. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Uh, Alderman Campbell. Seven votes can change anything, what I've always been told here on this board. We have the intentions of paying it back. That's the main thing. So I would say we have a good faith intentions of putting the money right back in there as soon as it's available through the utility. Alderman Campbell, I'll come right back to you. Uh, Alderman Stamper? Yeah, and this is this will be voted on by the same group. This isn't something that's down the road two, three years because things change, board turnover, those types of things. So we all should still be here when we vote on it. Thank you. Alderman Stanford, thank you. Alderman Campbell? That's all I was wanting to point out was uh, the intent. It was on the page. In, on page 21 as well, it talks about the declaration of intent, talking about where the money would go and come back from. So thank you. I appreciate that. All those in favor of accepting second reading of Ordinance 2017-44, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. No.
that, that passes 11 to 1. Um, next, we have first reading of Ordinance 2017-42. This is an ordinance amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code, Title 8, Chapter 3, implementing a stormwater management program in the city of Hendersonville. Alderman Skidmore. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting first reading of Ordinance 2017-42, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next we Thank have. Thank you, board. <laughs> next we have first reading of Ordinance 2017-46. This is an ordinance. I lost my place. Um, uh, amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code, Title 17, of Refuse and Trash Disposal. Alderman Stamper. Move to adopt. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Um, Alderman Stamper, would you wish to speak on this? Uh, Sure, this, this went through a uh, committee where uh, the general committee had some, some very good recommendations. It was slightly amended to include, uh, as you'll see, the uh, making it visible that the uh, contact information on uh, containers be clearly visible, uh, which was an amendment that I as sponsor supported. I think this is a reasonable ordinance, 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., um, is is, uh, is is a good time frame. I mean, so there you go. Alderman Stanford, thank you. Alderman Sprouse. Thank you. I was going to make the same point, but I'll thank the sponsor for including that. And it's very important to point out that when they have these construction trailers and things in residential areas, the public can help us enforce that. Um, the, the hours that they can use it, whether or not there's a name and a number listed on the, the trailer. We're not talking about the ones that are set outside businesses on a permanent basis. We're talking about these tempor temporary uh, construction or renovation ones. And so I wanted to thank the sponsor for taking that, uh, taking the, the, making that amendment or making that change at the request of committee. And I want to ask the public to help us with the enforcement of that if they uh, see the, see the um, dumpsters out there without the contact information or if they hear the dumpsters in use and contain and collections outside the hours of collection. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman Waters. Thank you, Mayor. I'm confused. What what I've just heard is is be sure that these containers are marked by these vendors, right? But why are we why does it how does it affect changing from three hundred to twenty five hundred feet? From the re from the residents, would someone explain that to me? Alderman Stanford, you want to try it? Well, I mean, sound travels, and it does. Uh, I think the original one actually had it a little further out, 2,500 feet, um, within a residential area. We felt like that that's a little bit too close to be operating those hours when uh, most people are are resting. Uh, I think it was Charles Lee before he left one time he said nothing good happens after midnight so uh, people out after midnight they may not mind the noise but most folks are, are sleeping during those hours. That was kind of the reasoning behind it. Uh, 2,500 feet being a, a fair distance so that it wouldn't disturb folks that are sleeping. Alderman Waters you still have the floor. I've got a problem with that, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. I like the amendment from what I've heard, except they didn't explain the 2,500 feet going from 300 feet. But I want to go a little further and discuss the time element. I say this because my neighbors on Southburn Drive have complained for some time about the noise coming from vendors who pick up containers behind Hobby Lobby as well as Marshalls, Michaels, and other locations. So for us on Southburn Drive, which I'm included, <clears throat> 2,500 feet will be the same as 300 feet. <clears throat> noise is noise. You don't stop sound. The 11 p.m. curfew has always been in effect, but apparently these independent vendors feel that midnight is the same as 11 p.m., and yes, they do pick up after midnight. We do hear the noise. I do get the complaints. I've got one about two months ago. What in the world is going on with all the noise? I try to explain to them. <clears throat> I see the current 
17-113 is 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., and it will remain the same under this amendment. So addition to 20, 2,200 feet will affect whom? It, it won't do anything to us because we're going to hear it. We're more than 20, 2,500 feet. <clears throat> I've discussed this with our public works director, and we have no authority over these independent vendors. I counted 14, so I don't know if our attorney has looked into these vendors' contract with these merchants, but if there's no stipulation in their contract about the time, then I would hope we could change their pickup time to co coincide with our city vendor, which I believe is from 8 to 6 to 5 or something like that. It's a daylight time. It's apparent we have not enforced the curfew rule over the last few years, and the addition of our new property inspector is not the answer. I've met with two apartment complexes this week that have units 1,000 to 2,000 feet from these commercial dumpsters. Both apartment managers tell me they have no complaints from their tenants. They both have independent vendors that come to their location once a week and haul off the trash. I was shocked when I asked <clears throat> what time did they come and pick up their trash. They come between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. To me, I was shocked. That's the decent time. So again, Mr. Chairman, I'm in favor of amendment for what it's worth, but I'm still concerned about the noise and the timing. Thank you. Alderman Waters, Alderman Stamper, thank you. Uh, Alderman Brown. I, I think I've answered my own question. Alderman Sprouse. Uh, just to, to um, Mr. Waters asking about the c connection between the distance and feet and the contact information, th there's no direct relationship between those two things. They're just separate elements of the same ordinance. The General Committee um, was reminded of a similar requirement placed upon uh, donation bins throughout the city and that that has been helpful with enforcement and so we would uh, we ask for the same requirement upon these and 2,500 feet is a considerable change a considerable increase and we're looking at almost a half mile and I think if we get much further than a half mile uh, it would be highly prohibitive upon some of the, the the businesses to be be able to conduct their business so I think if we just go from the length of a football field to almost a half mile that's pretty significant. Thank you. Alderman Strauss, thank you. Alderman Waters. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't agree with what the previous speaker just said. That's nonsense. Unless you live where I live and put up with this every night almost from these merchants, 2,500 feet, I don't know where they come up with it. It, it, it should be the same as 300 feet as far as I'm concerned because we're going to we hear it anyway. So th that, that's my complaint. It's, it's not the 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 really the 2,500 feet, because it's going to be the same as far as we're concerned. I'm concerned about the time that they pick it up. Now it's, I know it's supposed to be 11 to 6, no pickup, but that's not true. I get calls at midnight, and I go, I can hear it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Waters, thank you. Alderman Brown. All right, I'll come up with another question. Uh, I, I guess I agree. I think it's probably a good amendment. I'm still moving the 2,500 to half a mile around in my mind, whether that's a, that's a long way. Uh, but on, on behalf of those guys that, that are making a living emptying trash, picking up refuse, how are we going to implement this? How are they going to be notified? Uh, or, you know, I, I don't think we can just, we do two readings and we dive into this. And they're emptying trash at two o'clock in the morning, and uh, uh, Alderman Waters calls the PD, and the PD goes out. And so I don't think that's a good way to implement. I'm just curious how how we're gonna how we're gonna let them know that we're, we're changing the rules a bit. You can't empty at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, you can uh, empty the other time. So my question, uh, Alderman Spruss. I'd like to offer an amendment. If, when it says this ordinance takes effect at the earliest date allowed by law, I will say that this ordinance takes effect um, 90 days upon passage. We have a motion for an amendment. They'll give, they'll give folks for uh, some time for compliance. We have a motion looking for a second. second. We have a motion and a second. 
Um, Alderman Waters, do you want to speak on the amendment? I sure do. Go ahead. <clears throat> I want him to explain what, what, what's the 90 days got to do with it. it it's there. I mean, you, you're not going to change sound traveling at midnight from across the, 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 the lake in, into our subdivision. I don't care if it's 3,000 feet. Sound will move. Noise is noise. I don't care. So I don't understand why you want to defer it for 90 days. Thank you. Alderman Brown, I've got you next in the queue. Do you want to? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Waters, I, I'm, I understand noise is noise, believe me. Um, and and I, I sympathize with you. I don't live where you do, so I don't have to hear that. But um, <laughs> I'll come over. To, if you invite me over, though, I'll come over and spend the night. Okay. Um, <laughs> But, but again, I go back and say, I, I, I think the, I second the amendment because I think it's a good amendment. Uh, the vendors need time to adjust their schedules. And, and st you know, I think it's just fair to them. Uh, I think it's just fair to them. But I still go back and, and I like the 90 days, but how are, who's going to let them know that we changed the law, basically? What I'll do is I'll make sure that staff contacts folks out there, and as well as the fact that um, when I get complaints, I encourage people, and I hope everybody hears this, call the police department. They're the ones that are responsible for enforcing yeah. this in the middle of the night when that happens. Uh, there are other situations with dumpsters that are planning or, or excuse me, that are um, zoning or codes issues. But if it violates this ordinance as far as the time uh, that, that these dumpsters are being, uh, uh, that are being banged around and emptied, uh, call the police department. It's 822-1111. Uh, appreciate it. Alderman Brown, uh, anything else? Thank you. That's all. Okay. Uh, Alderman Sprouse. <laughs> Thank you. Um, to ask some of the answer some of the questions that were asked about this, I think Mr. Brown covered some of these. Um, but the purpose, of course, is to give people, because if we don't put this in here, should we pass this tonight and then we pass it into second reading, at 11 o'clock that night, someone's now going to be out of compliance with the law. And I think it's appropriate that we give them time to come in, in compliance. Um, but as also at the same time, the intentions being if the concern is that people are um, out collecting garbage um, at, in a residential neighborhood at midnight, this covers this. And if 300 feet is, not, is, is close and it's, you know, 2,500 feet, better. So I think if the concern is, is that, that there are people making noises and they are doing it late at night, then the, the appropriate response is to support an ordinance that restricts them to where they can't do it at midnight and they can't do it right next to someone's house. So thank you. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman Waters? Still on this amendment, please. I know it. It seems like I'm fighting a losing battle because none of you live where I do. And the shopping centers that's grown and grown and grown is, is, is pathetic. And, and I've checked with them, they all got independent we have nothing, we have no control over them. Not one, it's not like waste management, they're independents. Uh, and they have contracts. I, I, didn't, I didn't have the pleasure of looking at contracts because that's in their headquarters. But I don't know where they can come at, at midnight and pick up trash or three o'clock in the morning. If they have a contract with marshals to pick it up at a certain time, it's between them. To heck with us over there, you know. So, so that's my beef. 2,500 feet. You, you say what you want to about it, but it, it's not. It's not that. It's not it. It's the time that they're doing it. Thank you, Alderman Waters. Thank you, Alderman Stamper. Thank you, and I know this isn't quite to the amendment, but what the, we are the governing authority of this city, and we we have. The ability, um, obviously anyone can challenge our laws, but to set laws over the businesses, how they conduct business. So with the passage of this ordinance, Marshalls, Hobby Lobby, that area is within 2,500 feet of a residential area. They can't, they can't do it at 11 to 6 a.m. anymore. We're given 90 days to, to get warnings and to say, hey, there's a new rule coming into effect. You don't want to change your pickup schedule. But we... We can make them not pick up between 11 and 6. That's what this whole ordinance is about. Thank you. Alderman Waters. 
show me uh, 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 the marshals to my house is 2,500 feet. It's greater than 2,500 feet. Uh, Alderman I appreciate that. Please direct that to me. Well, I don't, I don't know. It's the idea of, of that they're hung up on 2,500 feet, and it, if it's a, during the day, you think nothing about it, whether it's 500 feet or 2,000 feet. It's just a normal day. But at 12 o'clock at night, if, if they have the right from marshals or whoever to, to pick up their trash, and that might be something my attorney can look into, I don't know. Uh, you want to do no. That? We, we can't tell them what they, they can and can't do. I, I disagree with that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Bradley? Yes, we can. It's called the police power of the city. And we already had a regulation that said 300 feet. We're now saying you can't pick up within 2,500 feet during those hours. So it's a pretty strong prohibition. And I'm sure our police department can enforce it. And so it would be a fine in city court if they continue to do it. Uh, Alderman Skidmore. Yes, thank you. Alderman, Alderman Skidmore. Yeah, we'll, thank we'll you very you. thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I know we've kind of stretched this to the 90-day rule, but I wanted to speak to the motion, but I think it's important that John, our, our city attorney is correct. I don't know, if John, if you remember this, but back when uh, I was the Alderman in Ward 3, we had the same issue, um, and I don't know if you all have this in, your, in Ward 3 anymore or not, but where Sonic and uh, Dollar General... Um, and it used to be, gosh, a food store there, and I can't, yeah. Piggly Wiggly, but it was something else back then, but starting to show my age, I can't remember. But remember, they were having problems, we were having problems, and Mom, I mean, excuse me, Miss Skidmore was an alderman at that time, too, and we all, I mean, they would come at 2 in the morning, and we literally, the police, I mean, not the police, but the city just called them, and they changed their schedule, and I think they would do the same thing. I, I don't really see, I understand Jim's, I mean, Alderman Waters' issue with it because back in the 80s, we had the same problem. And I had people calling me at 2 in the morning, too, saying that they, they're they down there now, Mark. They're down there now. Come on down yeah. and look at them, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah, and go they'll do it. And you got to go you because go. that's your job, you know, as an alderman. So we'd fly, you know, we'd run down there and, um, you know, tell and ask them, and of course they'd say, "Well, I'll talk to my supervisor." But in the same time, what we would do because it wasn't everybody in Hendersonville doing it, it was just that specific area behind Cheryl Drive, right there, uh, that they were getting uh, woken up, and uh, they changed their schedule. You don't even get them anymore. See, they changed it. You know, and that's been 20 years ago. And so that's what I encourage. I encourage the board, uh, and John is correct about the police powers because I think that's what we even. You even said back then, actually, uh, to that to that ordinance. I can't remember exactly what happened, but the point is, we kind of changed it and formed the and how we did it. I don't know. I can't even remember that, but I know it was changed and it worked. So I think this is a good faith effort upon us as a board and in your and your ward and as Ward Three. I'm sure they might have some problems too, just to let them know what we're doing. And, and they want to be good stewards of the community. I mean, this is that's their livelihood. They want to make everybody happy they don't want to make people mad so i think if we do the 90 days to let them know i think scott alderman sprouse is correct and let's see what happens and if it does if there's something wrong alderman waters we'll certainly i know this board and i know i will in public works and i know alderman campbell will as well we'll get right on it and help you with your problem over there thank you, alderman skidmore thank Tim, you alderman waters did you may i go ahead can he repeat the, the amendment? The, the sure. Amendment? Alderman Sprouse, can you repeat your amendment for us, please? Yes. Where it currently says this ordinance takes effect at the earliest date allowed by law, um, it will say this ordinance takes effect upon 90 days following passage. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman now, Waters, back to you. What are we supposed to do within that 90 days? <laughs> Alderman, uh, Notify. Mr. Bradley. The current ordinance is still in effect during that 90 days. But it's your position... Uh, John, to, noti to take care of that, to notify these event uh, these merchants, is that it? I'll make sure that staff does. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Alderman Waters. We have uh, uh, an amendment that's been properly seconded. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Now we're back on the main motion. 
question. And this is first reading of Ordinance 2017. I'm sorry, if, uh, dash 46, an ordinance amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code, Title 17. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next on the agenda, we have first reading of Ordinance 2018 2. This is an ordinance establishing standards for small wireless facilities in the public rights of way. Uh, we have a motion second. and a second. I would like to make two amendments, two very minor amendments, if you ask me. Uh, first will be on page 47. We're going to add a whereas. Uh, and this helps us be, continue to be consistent with uh, many of the cities in Tennessee. Uh, we're going to add a whereas the, the, uh, after the third whereas. This will be the fourth one. Whereas the city intends to fully comply with state and federal law to the extent it may preempt local municipal control as well as uh, with that same amendment to make a second change. And this is going to be on page 49, and it will go, you see, 16, 17, and under item 17B. Um, at the end of that paragraph, the paragraph starts all other wireless equipment. What I'd like to do is strike or other support structures. So we're just going to strike the language right there and put a period after poles and strike out or other support structures. So there's two changes I'm asking to make in my amendment. The first one is on 47, add that whereas. The second one is on 49, by striking those four words or other support structures. Uh, motion and a second. Appreciate that. We good? That's fine. Uh, Alderman Stamper. Can you just briefly, for the benefit of the public, explain what a small wireless facility is. I can't do that briefly, um, but I'll. Um, um, where a lot of telecommunication company has gone have gone is uh, they're used to essentially boosters. Uh, they don't so much put up large um, uh, the, the large poles, the large structures that that, that we used to see that that uh, sprouted in the early 2000s, late 1990s. Uh, these boosters, you don't even notice them for the most part. They're usually six to ten feet tall. They're usually very skinny. A lot of times, at least in our case in Hendersonville, we have two of them. Uh, they're attached or they're, they're in cabinets next to some of our utility poles. I think one of them is next to uh, one, of our, um, one of our poles that holds up uh, uh, a traffic signal. Um, right now, we are regulating those. The, there is a movement for the state to start regulating these and not allow the cities to do that. We think they're doing a pretty good job of it. What we want to do is we want to be... Um, we want to use some standard language that several other cities around Tennessee are using uh, because we want, to we want to show that certainly we, we should have the right to do this and we can work with other cities and make it easy uh, for the benefit of the public and the benefit of these companies to install this, this equipment in Hendersonville. Uh, ideally, what we're, what we're doing is we're not only uh, setting, um, you know, setting forth some parameters for for us to work with these companies to provide better service, but we're also showing the Tennessee General Assembly that we got this uh, and that we want to continue to regulate them uh, and not have that opportunity taken away from us. Uh, what I would like to, it, when we pass this, um, we will let our uh, legislators know, and I already let them know that we're working on this, that we have, uh, uh, we have an ordinance that is very similar to, the, to several around the state, and uh, we feel like if the state wants to take away some authority from the cities, we should not be one of those cities, at least exempt us. However, we feel like all cities should have this right. So, uh, I, appreciate Alder I appreciate that, Mayor, for anybody that may not have been familiar with this emerging technology issue. I, I'm glad the public now knows. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alderman Sprouse on the amendment? Uh, uh, or do you want no. to vote on the amendment? I'll wait for the main motion. Okay. We have uh, an amendment on the floor. Those two changes... All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Alderman Strauss. Uh, I'll just uh, follow up, Mayor, if you don't mind. I've, uh, it's been a while since I've used an analogy. Um, but basically what, the, what these providers are doing is something that we do in this building, something I do in my house. There are portions of my house that uh, my Wi-Fi or my router won't reach. So instead of me getting a bigger, badder, more powerful router, I just take a spot somewhere in the middle and I put in a repeater, something that carries the signal to somewhere else. And that's what the providers are doing right now. Um, it actually helps because you don't have to worry so much about uh, buildings getting in the way. You don't have to worry about uh, the geography and, and ridges and tree lines. Um, it takes away white areas. And um, 
but the most importantly, they're wanting to install them in our polls. And so it's just a method for us to regulate those and to collect some revenue for that. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. All those in favor of first reading of Ordinance 2018-2, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have uh, first reading of Ordinance 2018-3. This is an ordinance to establish comprehensive fees for small cell facility permits for, this, for the use of city-owned property and public right-of-way. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of adopting um, Ordinance 2018-3 on first reading, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have reading of Resolution 2017-45. This is a resolution to move the Codes Department property maintenance inspector position to the police department. Alderman Brown. So moved. We have a motion and a second. What, what we are doing here is taking position that was in codes, moving it to the PD, moving the money that was left in the codes budget and the money for the vehicle to the PD. We'll become a codes enforcement officer now instead of a codes enforcement inspector. It'll be a little bit different look. Uh, the gentleman's already been hired, so I suggest we move the money. Thank you, Alderman Brown. I have one more thing after this. All those in favor of Resolution 2017-45, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Remember, we have, under information, we have the application for a person to be on the beer board. That will be considered, uh, we will vote on that at our next meeting. Uh, I think all of you have, uh, uh, all of you have a copy of that. Alderman Stamper. Uh, thank you for your memo you sent out on open ones, and I've been working with Steve Mills on adjustments and appeals, which I've been privileged to be the li li liaison for for many years. And uh, I noticed on beer board you had two, va it's two vacancies, but only one ward. Right. So is, is the other one just kind of up for grabs? If we, we have we have an at-large one, certainly willing to take nominations. Okay. Um, certainly just willing to work with somebody. Good to know. So, Thank and you. I can't take credit for what you just thanked me for. That goes to Kay Franklin. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> so, do I have a motion to adjourn? We'll move. We'll move. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. That passed unanimously. Thank you.